Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mastermind. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Stacy. Hi, how's it going? Great. Just yes. Get so I wanted to ask you what you have going on with AI and we've got some AI news this week, but I thought we'd start with a little Q and A. What are you working on? What are some of your um, speed bumps or hurdles that you've got right now? Um, and see if there's anything that we can do to help you out with those. Awesome. Um, I can go first. I, we, you know what, I think we're good right this moment, but we are just to kind of read you in on where we're at. We're um, going to be onboarding Jasper this week. We had played around with it a little bit and um, we have a really great um, brand guide laid out. We already have do's and don'ts from a copywriter that's helped us really map out our voice. And so putting that into Jasper is just going to be so cool. So um, we're putting aside time next week to get that done. Um, and same time I'll, yeah, I'll be at a conference on Tuesday, so I may not be available. I'll definitely be on audio if I can, but just very excited to see how we can, you know, leverage that to get some, some good voicing. We were doing some things today for invites to meet up at the conference and <clears throat> I was just playing around with different stuff. I played around with Claude mm -hmm. and that gave me some, you know, interesting prompts. I didn't want to be super salesy on how to connect with these people. So use Claude for that, just playing around with that. But I definitely feel like Jasper's kind of the way to go, especially to get my voice down um, versus Infinix voice. And so it's just exciting. That is exciting. Um, did you, are you getting a business plan? Is that what you signed up for? Um, I think so. It was the one where we can have multiple, I don't have the, the thing in front of me, okay. but it was the one where we can have multiple logins and I think it's the $59 or $99 a month. Okay. Plan. So not the business plan then. On the business plan, you get access to some more of the things like the style guide, which is where you can say, never use this term or replace this one with this one. Or, yeah. Um, you get way more voices. Um, okay. You get, um, there's a ton of things. Um, access to the analytics which gotcha. is in its beta right now, but it's pretty powerful. And the reason I'm saying that is because it will actually be able to give you data behind the content you're creating. So gotcha. if you write a blog with Jasper for Infinix and put it up, if you connect your Google Analytics in there, it will tell you this blog did really well or it learns that if it didn't do that well, what can we change, redo it and make it better gotcha. and put it back up and watch the actual numbers. So yes. anyways. Yeah, to follow up, I looked at, at it just now. Yeah, it was the 59 is the pro was what we were gonna be doing. Um, with a business feature, I had to contact sales. And so um, while I'm open to maybe upgrading that a little bit later, I just wanna get started. For sure, yeah. yeah. That's great. So. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I can go next. Um, one of the new projects that is on our plate is my analytics person has found a way. We used Zendesk for customer support. And we're trying to figure out how to automate email response because we've we've cut back down on chat. We found a way to somewhat automate chat. We found a way to somewhat automate phone and now we're all of our creep time, as we call it, like, oh, we have 100 hours customer service a week. How has the time not dropped, even though we've automated it? Hmm, all that time's going to email. Is that because people are looking for hours or is that because people are going to email because they're not getting what they need from phone and chat? So with email, um, he's found a way that we can actually automate our email response using AI as well from some Zendesk triggers that they've set up using um, OpenAI Assistant um, and like feeding it our FAQ data and our already templated responses, of course, to be able to send out 
automatically, or at least uh, we haven't completely tested it yet, but like, do we need a human review first just to press send or is it able to do it on its own? So that's what my operations slash customer service team is working on. That's great. That's amazing. That deserves yeah, congratulations too. So, <laughs> well, I'll, it'll, we're, I'm slow to congratulate and cheers until we see it in action. Cause I think yeah, but you're testing okay. it. Yes. You, testing. You've gotten a way to fit it into your process. And that is like usually the hardest part for people to get right. That we get all these tools and they're, none of them are connected in any way. So I think, yes, congratulations on getting that started. <laughs> and I will say our, the calls from last week, I think it was, was it the Wednesday call or the Thursday call? I don't remember. I was pretty silent on both of them, but it was mainly because it was Wednesday's call. You guys were talking something about using how you guys use chat on your websites. And yep. I was playing on your guys' websites. So sorry if you had some odd traffic on your guys' chat bot asking it. <laughs> Because I was trying to like get it to the point where it'd be like, okay, you need to talk to a human now. Um, but you, you sparked an idea that we had to stop um, proceeding with caffeinated CX, which is they yeah app bought for your site because it didn't uh, layer with Zapier the way that they said it would. Or mm. basically, you would get to a point of like, okay, the chat bot can't answer your question. Chat with a live agent based on our plan that we have, which is not a top tier plan, it wouldn't connect. It would not allow you to then talk to a live agent. But then I was thinking, why don't we just put a disclaimer? Like, Hey, you're talking to a bot. If you get to a point where they're not, the bot is not able to like help you. Here's our email customer service. You can email somebody. We've got a 24 hour customers like email response rate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's great. And just to be clear, ours is just open wide because we wanted to test what would happen. And we have right. seen some pretty interesting things with that, but I would definitely, the actual one that we want to put out there would have like a certain amount of steps or if they wanted to speak to someone human or whatever it was, like that would all be built in the parameters, which are not in there now is just- right. That's, and I think you can easily build that if you wanted, like after oh, yeah. the surprise of them saying, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's our customer service email yep. to talk to somebody. So that just kind of brought back that project. Cause we were kind of back to the drawing board of finding an alternative tool or really waiting until a tool on our current platform. Right. Do existence but and that's the challenge right like we find these tools and but if they don't integrate in then unless you're going to change everything to just have that one tool which you know most people are not going to do and the other thing that we've been working on and i'm trying to encourage um one of my marketing assistants to start joining this call because she's in a time zone that would actually make sense for her to join this call everybody else it's like 1 a.m. for them. So they're they're never going to be able to to join these. Um she has been playing a lot. I'm, I'm reading what kind of she wrote down um on our sheet. A lot of things new in Dali for voiceovers that we found, deep reels, basically a way for us to like make our training vid videos into new content easier. So she's been testing mm. that and just like She'll just launch a video and I'm like, that looks great. What did you build that in? She's like, I found this random tool and it, I got the free subscription. So it works for now. And so we, they've just been playing a lot with like what video creation human generator tool is best that we want to decide to use. So that's really cool. Yeah, hopefully. And then I've, I linked her to your guys' YouTube channel. So she might, he, Paula, if you're listening, good work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we should have her on one of these and show us what she's been doing and be our guest on here. I'm trying to convince her too. I, I saw your guys' first newsletter as well. So I forwarded that on to her and was like, this is what I was talking about. Subscribe. Let me know if you want to join. So I we'll we'll get her here. We will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think it would be good to show, like, show what she's doing. Um and 
I don't know if you've if she's been playing with Hey Jen, but Hey Jen, like their new versions have just come leaps and bounds, and they've got an API too. What's the like the API connects to? Um, all sorts of things. It's kind of up to what you could think of doing. So it could connect to your socials. They are. So I know some people who are working on it to connect to something to push it to LinkedIn so that you could do custom videos to LinkedIn connections. Um, but they're supposed to be building it, uh, the email part into, so you can have the custom videos go out on, um, on your email. But if it has an API, it should be able to push it to social or to whatever you use to manage your social. Remind me, last week, what was the name of the Wednesday's call where you guys were the sales assistant? What was the name of that? Oh, Ava. Ava. Ava? And it, yeah, it's Artisan is the company. Artisan, I think, what is it? Dot AI or dot co? Dot co put it in the chat. Thank you. I think I got Devin and artisan. So I kept being like, it was called like Alvin or something. I was trying to remember <laughs> it on Monday. When I was like capturing my notes. I was like, yeah. Artisan. Okay. There's so many, they're all starting yeah. to. And literally you can search, like search, I like keyword search for that tool and it didn't come up. Like there's so many other tools out there with that similar mm -hmm. cell. But yeah. Yeah, I have not gotten Ava set up yet and I probably won't till next week. So we'll let you know how that goes when we get her set up. Yeah, and that's what I appreciate most about these calls is like you you, you help us decide like, here's what's new. We'll check out for you so you don't waste your time. Here's what we checked out and is worth your time. And here like, here's what you, we think you should be doing right now. So I appreciate you like make the distinction of like, this is a do right now. This is a, you test internally. This is like a hold off, like good to know yeah. about, but not quite ready. Yeah. Cause good. I do think the, Hey Jen, since it does have the API and integration, that could be what your assistant uses for her videos because you can feed it scripts and do all the things as you know, because you created your avatar yeah. in yeah. class. So and if you can integrate, then that's the missing piece. So that's the main part also about these discussions too. Like there's a lot of tools that do the same things, but will it work mm -hmm. for you? Um, and it's very easy to get distracted. <laughs> and that's a good thing. I, I wasn't on that call, but just um, understanding. So we used to use a tool called BombBomb um, for our salespeople at a previous organization. It seems like it's pretty similar to Hey Jen. Do you know what the differences might be? Do you know that tool? No. Bomb bomb. Okay. <clears throat> it seems like it's similar, but obviously Hey Jen might be more of an AI um, first platform. Bomb bomb um, was one of the first ones I knew about that you could insert video into email. Um, She's been around for quite a while. Bomb bomb, you have to record each message. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. And but it can be, you can send it out, you know, the same message to multiple people if you want. But it was um more of a sales tool and mm -hmm. an like an update option. A lot of real estate agencies and mortgage companies were using it mm -hmm. way back. So so well, um I know Stacy, you haven't gone through the images and video module yet um and we'll mm -hmm. go into hey Jen in a lot more detail in that module but um with hey Jen, it's basically you create an avatar of yourself oh, by okay. Okay. uploading a um picture or a video of yourself and it looks very okay. realistic and you yeah. can also um import your voice and train they're partnered with 11 labs which does the audio portion so yeah. you can train your own voice and have it sound like you as well and then you can take your avatar mm -hmm. and personalize 
messages, like it will um, link to different CRMs and different messaging. And so you can send out messaging send to your clients. That's like, Hey, Stacy, thanks for stopping by my website today. Hey, Mackenzie, thanks for stopping by my website today. And awesome. you don't have to like record it's actually record it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. That is so, so cool. So that's basically like a complete replacement of the previous generation, um, that I was working with. So, so cool for now. It's fun. And it, it does like a lot more to, we have a video of Andrea somewhere where she's speaking French. And... I know I was trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it lives because it's I think it's hilarious. in the Facebook group. <laughs> That's awesome. It, like it so literally cool. looks like she's speaking in French. And I was like, the first time I watched that, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one so of our cool. clients, um, after going through the course, started using it for onboarding and um, even uh, monthly updates and their social media company. And because they didn't have to record it all, they just fed it the script or the information, however they did that. It would send the email that just made it look like they sat down and created this whole video just for them. And it makes people feel like, oh, it's the same thing um, with the LinkedIn outreach, which I think is really cool because the tool that's using that will send um, leads or people that you prospects you find there have your mm -hmm. little picture down at the bottom and like their website and somehow it's able the AI is able to pull information about them and put that into the script. And it's this whole thing. So it's, That's it's super pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yay. Love it. And Mackenzie could work for your internal stuff for training. It could work for the external stuff or social. Like it's really endless on what you can do with these. Um, it's just like, uh, and also loom videos, which I'm sure, most of you, if not all of you have seen, um, mm -hmm. and they look the same, right? With a little picture and then, you know, you're recording your screen. Well, it will now, and actually there's probably been many iterations since even this information, but um, we'll, when you record what you're doing, it will make a text version of that. So it's like your written SOPs also at the same time as you're recording. So it's, there's so many tools. You just have to know what it is you need and like stay focused on that. Otherwise, again, it just gets like. So cool. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's kind of a good segue to one of the things that we were going to talk about today, which is like whether or not as a leader, if you just let your, um, the people like your employees, your staff, if you let them have fun with AI, if you say, Hey, go explore chat GPT and do you give them free reign with it, with all the tools that are out there, or is it better to be, uh, a little more strict and put up some framework around it. And, um, this is all coming from, because one of the guys at OpenAI said that he believes you should just let your staff have free reign with AI and just let them explore it. Yeah, the COO, <laughs> the COO of OpenAI said the best way to implement AI in your company is to get people paid accounts to like Claude or OpenAI and just let them go free with it. And, you know, pick off tasks to do. And when I read that, I was like, but people need to know the liabilities and what they should put into AI and what they should not put mm -hmm. into AI and get some sort of training because that's such a huge liability for a company if they just tell everybody, like, hey, go ahead, use AI, and there's no parameters on it. Um, and Do you yeah. think that they're putting parameters on it? at the employee level though like maybe they're changing their um like when you sign on as a new employee it's almost like you're taking responsibility for the tools you use or the information that comes out of those tools like that you're that person i mean i don't know this is, but i'm thinking how how can they 
how can you do that and like have consistency and cohesive message or any of that? Yeah. Well, and I think about the liability and risk of it, and there needs to be the internal AI use policy and, you know, some of those things. So people know the basics of how to stay, stay safe um, with it. And it's the COO who is just like, hey, yeah, give everybody a paid subscription and just let them start. Or is it just, hey, pay for our stuff? That's why I'm yeah, saying I this. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm. Yeah. That seems really loose. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Unless, know, like you're saying. Oh, go ahead, Mackenzie. So my husband's an investment banker and they have a ton of privacy. Yeah. And ish, like guidance. And uh, one thing that they're doing is they did ban all AI. However, they're building an internal AI, which I'm assuming has all the logic baked in that it's an internal system so it doesn't get shared. And then whatever they don't want them to do is already blocked. Yeah. So I think I think that's interesting, but I can also see it being like, well, this doesn't actually work. <laughs> Let me go on my personal computer and work on this. Well, and the internal AIs, um, a lot of times it's just like a, company account of chat GPT so that it's protected and that's yeah. what they might mean by their own custom AI it's probably just like a wrapper on chat GPT um but they I don't know what I'd be curious what they would do because once you have that business account with chat GPT or enterprise then you like chat GPT says that they're protecting all of your data and all your outputs and that your information stays in that sandbox and doesn't mm -hmm. leave that sandbox. But then still the people who are using it for outputs, let's say somebody is in marketing, like they still have to know how to safely use it and how to edit it and make sure that it complies with the regulations. Mm -hmm. And finance and health are the two that um, they're watching the most as far as what shows up on the internet and websites, um, anything finance, medical health, uh, they don't want AI generated content. Like Google has said that they will be monitoring that. Yeah, I think there's certain industries where that just does not make sense to give your staff free reign. And and we talked about this earlier too, um, just people in general think they're using it correctly and they just assume that the outputs that they're receiving are good. Like the biggest example I can think of this is the whole Michael Cohen thing with um, citing the fake AI cases in court yeah. <laughs> like he literally went on there and used use chat GPT to get some AI court cases and they were totally fake totally made up and like definitely law definitely medical finance like those fields I can't see just telling my employees uh yeah y'all have fun <laughs> put in whatever you want yeah, it's interesting. I definitely think there's, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if you have a course specifically you could sell to corporations, Nicole, but you could do a kind of a wrapper package where it's like a, you know, general AI training that you could sell to many corporations right now if they're thinking of onboarding. Um, and then I don't know if you have that and then get their marketing team or their executive team on this kind of uh, package so they really learn the tools and know how to use them correctly. But I think there's definitely the company has to come up with their own set of standards. And then there's a training involved. And then depending on how the company chooses to use that, different team members need to be given directives. Like some companies are a little bit old school. I'm sure a lot of, you know, um, I can think of a, a few different industries not to, um, just label, but I think there's a couple that are a little bit old school 
And so they're going to, and, and they, they take such pride in their work product that some of them may not be as open as others. And some might be cool. It's a, it's a new tech company and maybe they don't care that everybody can have free reign. So um, it's definitely interesting to think about how, uh, how it's going to roll out. Yeah. And that's definitely one of our audiences is that, and then teaching teams how to bring it into workflows, automations, into the internal process, into the corporations. Um, so that's part of our focus is to like consult businesses to see what tools will work, work best and then mm -hmm. which departments would need what and how to train the people. And so we have done some of that, but we do have, um, consulting training and implementation for corporate um, businesses. And that is all run through AI Smart Ventures, which I will put in the chat, a website that is um, still in the works, but this will give you an idea of that sort of audience too. And that's a gold mine. You guys are right on the, on the cutting edge of everything. I love it. Because that's where it is. It's not about two people in the company learning how to use AI. It's about using it to um, move the whole team, the whole corporation forward. And that's what we want to do. Yeah, and there's great. so many different aspects that um, companies need as far as AI. And like we touch a lot on, you know, LLMs and generative AI for basic users in the beginning. But I mean, there's AI coming out for business intelligence now, and it's called generative BI, which mm -hmm. is backed by AI. So like all these sections of companies are eventually going to have like their own AI departments, their own AI editors, their own whatever title you want to give those employees. But um, it's fascinating seeing like what areas AI can help us in and then being able to apply that to like save time so you can actually focus on the tasks and things that you actually enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah and integrating them with your CRM and email and customer service and all of that. I mean that's the whole package is that um yeah. usually the first people to look at it are the marketing people for mm -hmm. obvious reasons, because that was sort of the package it was wrapped in in the beginning. But now it's less about finding tools um, and more about finding um, systems of tools, workflows, automations that work for you as a business. And what works for you, Stacy, will be different than what, what works for McKinsey. And, you know, and depending on the industry, like we were just talking about, like, healthcare is going to be different. So you probably, you can use it in healthcare, but your parameters are going to be a little different than like, we can just have a bot that answers questions about AI and business and whatever. But like Katie was saying, they don't want doctors giving medical advice or like a <laughs> yeah. nurse or something, you know, <laughs> because clearly there's more liability there and there needs to be that responsibility. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like Mackenzie, you've done a good job of like starting in marketing and getting other people in your organization to think about AI and how they're using it. Um, and I think so next week, we're going to have a guest from Australia come on and he's going to give us case studies of custom implementations because that's what their company does. Um, and I think you'll find that interesting just to see what other people are having custom built. And then the next one that we're going to do, um, Mackenzie, you met Don already, but we're going to bring Don Ho, the lawyer. He's a tech lawyer, and he's going to come in and talk about AI use policy and some of those things. So if you have more questions for him, um, he is going to be on in a couple of weeks. Because these are the things that we believe in and we think are really important. Um, and we get inspired from seeing what other people are doing and how we might be able to apply something like that in our business, too. Um, and so I think Jamie next week will be really interesting. I know for a fact he's going to bring in a case study that he probably 
that you would not have ever heard anywhere before. Um, and I want to hear more about it. I haven't seen his whole case study, but he was telling me about the project and it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, but I think it'll open your minds to more of what's possible with some custom implementations. I think it's also been interesting to hear the costs associated with it because it's like what's the like what's the ballpark even here? Even uh last week when you were like a custom chatbot, you're looking at like twenty five hundred to start. Cause a lot of this yeah. is like, is this something we should try on our own? Or is it best just to get outside help to actually set it up instead of learning to just the balance of depends on your internal costs. Yeah. And for 2,500 to have a booking bot or, you know, like a basic chat bot, you'll have to learn. I mean, you'll learn the insight a little bit because you'll want to be able to train it a bit more. But mm -hmm. I personally, like, I think it's so worth it to get the people who are doing this day in, day out and get their expertise. Because when you're dealing with bots, there's the training of it. So they might also have training information that you just wouldn't even think of or have access to. We were talking about this on our last Zoom, but there's sales bots and there's sales and discovery calls that are based on a certain methodology. If you have access to that person's methodology and all the documentation on the methodology, then you can train your bots in like a specific methodology. And the companies that do the bot training typically have access to all these different methodologies to train your bot. And so you'll save your time and you'll also learn in the process because you'll want it to continuously improve. So likely you still will have some, you'll have some input to the training of the bot ongoing. I also put in the chat some information about another thing we have coming and that's where um, we get more into the AI policies, both internal and external, and we have Don on board and it's actually going to be part of our AI Smart Ventures universe and we have AI Smart Law. So that website should be launching soon. Um, we'll also have templates available for um, people to download to create their own policies, but also workshops and courses about how to um, bring in the AI and also how to cover yourself and what that looks like from a legal aspect, from an actual, like Nicole was saying, tech lawyer. So that's really exciting too. Yeah, because one of the things, like everybody has business liability insurance, but right now there's not special clauses for AI. And so it is a liability if you are using AI and there's a breach and the, that's not specified, it's not covered in your insurance policy. So if you create an internal AI use policy that has certain parameters, it actually limits the liability and allows, like you're more likely to get covered by your cyber insurance or your liability insurance if something happens, if you cover these areas. And that's the kind of stuff that Don's going to go over. And like in the workshop, he goes over that in more detail. He'll be doing a two hour workshop um, in April about AI use policies. And we are using the standards of the EU because the US is talking about having standards, but they haven't actually implemented anything yet. And so there's this big gray area. And this is where this is where a lot of the nefarious things can happen right now that um, that you would just want to protect yourself from. So we've got our external use policy that because we want to disclose to our clients that we're using AI, plus they know, but we have it documented. And then for internal use, you know, that's usually where people would want to start because for most, I guess for you guys, it doesn't really matter as much if you are telling people on the outside that you're using AI but it does matter how you use it inside. Yeah, and that sort of circles back to that whole idea of just letting people have free reign. I mean, to me, you would at least want some sort of internal policy on how the tools can be used and what they can be used for. 
Um, so if it is okay to have AI write your emails for you, or it is okay to have AI do like certain things, but don't use it in these cases and um, setting those parameters for people. A lot of changes are coming with all this AI stuff, so. Yes. I do have a question about um, Sora. So openai.com forward slash Sora, yep. I saw that. Um, and it looks like that's coming out at some point. Do you guys happen to know about when <laughs> that's gonna be released? No. No, uh, unfortunately we don't have an inside man or woman at open AI. <laughs> um, I'm just can... wondering, I think that would be so like one of the things, you know, obviously we're a global event company. So one of the things that would be so cool, I'm just seeing some of these, we do struggle and it, it's quite a spend for us to do some of these, um, you know, commercial like videos that we would like to show <laughs> of cool places in the world where we can take people. So having that, it's going to be amazing for us. So um, I think the video with the girl walking um, was generated by the app, which is powered by, so you can download, um, I have to look at the exact name of the app, but there is some of the same technology um, on the cell phone app and it is Sora AI video art generator. And so there, there's a few few things to understand with Sora. Um, Sora is partially using stable diffusion and open AI is now like taking it over and becoming like the one to implement the high level experience with Sora. Um, and they're currently letting a limited amount of people test it because some of these videos are so realistic. Um, there's a lot going on with like fake news right now, and they don't want to just mass release it to the public. Um, there's currently a lot of fake news going around with Kate M Middleton, you know, in the Royal family. And there's like a lot of, um, AI generated videos that are being created of her and AI generated photos of her. And it's causing the rumor mill to just create chaos. <laughs> so they are trying to be proactive about releasing this um, because this will basically change a lot of things, a lot of how we receive media to you. Hopefully for after the election then. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a really good LinkedIn post. I'll have to see if I can find it. Um, but it was basically talking about how AI, there's a good chunk of the population um, that doesn't realize what they're seeing on Facebook and other platforms is even fake. And, and it, that can be like used you know, in a nefarious ways, like Nicole was saying, or like Andrea, you just brought up the election and people don't realize <laughs> like it's, it's crazy. What you think would be totally um, oh, yeah. easy to recognize as AI people are on there like, oh my gosh, that's, that's real. I, I want to live there. I want to be in this house that looks like this. <laughs> yeah. It's just completely generated. So I'm going to try to find that post because that was like such a good, um, let me see. Here it is. I think I can share the link. And I think that's where having the tags of like, you know, whether it's a little star or a little mark of some type that just shows that you're using AI and and because it's not required now, that's why we are just very adamant about using it responsibly and ethically, because yes, there are many ways you could use it, um, but there are a lot of positive ways you could use it too. And oh. So it's it's a whole um, series, like slide series that you go through 
Um, but he's basically talking about, he shows some images where people on social media are believing these images are real. Ones that you would even think are completely <laughs> like this. She's got four legs, but there are people <laughs> online who think that this is real somehow. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then, I think it's a serious issue. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, this was one that, um, I think got over a hundred K likes or something. Um, like this girl on a beach, completely fake. This kitchen looks amazing. I would love to have a kitchen like that completely fake, but it's generating a lot of attention and his whole take is, um, if the engagement rates on these types of hosts are high, like who's behind these accounts and who's running them and can they just sell those accounts knowing that they have a bunch of gullible people that are engaging with these posts, can they just sell them to people who want to use them for politics or want to use them for, and so it's like a really interesting take on um, how people in the world are using AI and how other people are perceiving AI. Yeah. So it's like fishing for an audience using that and then selling the audience to other people to use it for something completely different. Completely different. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And on that, I would encourage you to report any accounts as spam. Like if you're on Facebook or Instagram and see this stuff, like to report it because um, like it's going to get even more out of control, but I've seen some where they've taken celebrity likenesses endorsing products. And I can totally tell it's an AI generated video where like Lori from Shark Tank endorses something and there were all these ads, but it was totally AI. And so I report it like when I see it because it's just like I it's just not right. Um and I don't know what they're gonna end up having to do to control things like that because it has to get spotted and then it has to get reported and it has to get taken down. If no one reports it, then it can just go under the radar. At least right now. It's not crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean that what you just showed Katie like now I'm just like spinning with all these thoughts about this because it reminds me of the older version of that where people would ask these random questions and they're fishing for your information so it would be like your dog's name your favorite dog's name or your grandmother's yeah. name on your, you know, like these questions like that. And I <laughs> yeah. see the like, quizzes, the quizzes. Yeah, I see like my mom <laughs> or like some of my aunts that are older, like answering the questions and not really knowing what's happening and how, wh how would they, it's not their fault. It's just a way of gathering information but going around it, I don't know. It's just like, that's the new thing, right? Like it used to be about gathering your, you know, what was your mother's maiden name? And, you know, plus your favorite dog's name. And, you know, and these are the questions that would be security questions, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. hmm. And I, I will say, I think that a majority of these theme accounts that post, um, like AI generated content. Like I follow some uh, old home pages and they they have a mix of real houses and AI houses. And those are likely totally fine. They're yeah. just some random person behind them who's a fan of those things. But it, it like does make you want to think critically about the entire situation <laughs> yeah. yeah because that's still a creative thing right like yeah. if you see that orange house like maybe you just wanted to see what an orange house would yeah. look like or you know there's still some creativity behind it as long as they're representing it in the right way right like right. if they're selling the orange house that has the balloons from up on it is probably not real right but if it's just there for fun like that's different you know it is fun totally Representation, I guess.
<laughs> I'll be it will be um interesting to see when Sora gets released to the public so we'll have to as soon as it does you know I'll be playing with it <laughs> <laughs> well do you guys know of any other tools that you know would be good to look into obviously not as you wouldn't have anything quite like Sora but um just for different you know content so ideas or Runway ML is a good one. Um, you can take generated images or images that you've taken with a camera and you can animate those. Um, turn It has like a auto generate feature and you can also manually select which areas you would like to add motion to. Um, and That's cool. I would say that one does a pretty decent job. Um, there's a free trial of it so you can play around with it and the, like the paid version is going to be um much better in quality but the runway ml is probably where i would start if you're looking for motion or movie like content cool thanks yeah and for you yeah. it's going to be more like locations right so that's going to be easier to create than like the people like remember in mid journey in the beginning like everybody had like 12 fingers or something mm -hmm. but it it was always easier to create like the landscapes or locations so mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many stock footage yeah. of that too um i think yeah. Kim might even have something in there um yeah, and there's one that's on our resource list. It's called Kyber. Um, at AISmartCourse.com, there's a list of tools, and it's K-A-I-B-E-R, and you can apply animation to your still images, um, and you can create some images too, but it's, it's a really easy one, and you can do some for free um, okay. on that one too. Great. And you said your um your resources on AI Smart Marketing? AISmartCourse.com is oh, where okay. the list lives right now. Um and you'll you are getting uh images and video classes coming up for you. So you'll get cool. more resources um at that class too. So exciting. <laughs> Yeah, they're rocking my world. I just love new things. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you have a lot of people in your courses that are early adopters. And I mean, I'm not like super early. Y'all are super early. But I'm saying I just I love um, I'll always jump off and try new things. So this is awesome. Well, you are early like you. You are early in this. There's still a good half the businesses out there that aren't doing anything at all with AI or they are actively telling people not to use it. Yeah, it's sad. FYI, I was just looking at Canva and they have a bunch of apps, but the one I pulled up was Magic Media and it will do images and videos from um, text, but it, and it's using Runway as its source. So um, if you already have a Canva subscription, I would use it through there and then you don't have to create a whole other account. Um, it's all about like the tools again like if you're mm -hmm. gonna use if you are using canva regularly like just use that the tools that are in there um yeah and that one's using runway so very cool yeah we do use canva so that's a cool one to look at what was that one called andrea it's called magic media is the app okay I'm just testing it right now. I just use whatever um, their inspire me prompt to see what kind of video it comes up with. Um, takes a little longer to generate video for, I guess, obvious reasons, right? But um, it's still generating. But, you know, for us, because we are teaching, that is how we stay up to date on everything. But for you as individuals using the tools, you almost have to block out or be in groups like this so that you don't have to take all the time, right? Um, yeah. To be able to know the new tools that are coming, noteworthy ones you should be looking at, ones like, oh, that's cool, but like it only integrates with XYZ um, mm -hmm. because it takes time. 
Yeah. So let's see. Here's one that I just made and we can watch it together because I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, this is not the, this is just an image I made, but this is the video that I, AI generated. So let's see. It was beautiful snow-capped mountains in the style of a professional cin cinematography natural light. It's pretty simple of an animation, but still it's a video. I wasn't, I didn't feed it what to do. Um, yeah. So also you can go up here um, and make it shorter. You could probably extend it out longer. Yeah, you can. And mm -hmm. there you go. Like, so that's just based on their prompt. That's just a little, it's got some clouds that mm -hmm. it moves slightly. But if it was, if you wanted to do like, people walking the streets of New York quickly or something like that, then it probably would give you a better result for what you're looking for. But yeah, that was just the simple little test I just ran. Uh, yeah. Checking yeah, that out tomorrow. Runway, so. <laughs> cool. Okay, Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. um, have you tried putting your training videos into opus no what's opus oh video repurposing um tool where it chops your videos up for you oh okay you, i watch training videos on this from yeah. Katie. so sometimes i remember who was talking about it more than the name of Katie yeah. did a training video on it um i didn't take that tool because we already had this is where I need Paula. We already have another tool that we were using that cuts our videos into shorts. And the other problem was our videos are already pretty short. We don't really have a ton of long form content. It's already been edited to be short form. So it's yep. we were when we were looking at it, I remember um, it was like, okay, this is when we make new videos and have a lot of that content that we have to go and manually edit. That can yeah. do it for us. Okay. Um, are your course, like your training videos that short? They're put, the thing is they are short because we have like 60 per lesson. So they're meant to okay. be like two to three minutes long each. Okay, cool. And you can set the length on Opus of the video too. So you could have a two minute one cut into the 30 seconds. Um, they've added some more uh, features like that mm. if you were going to use that but I was just curious because you had said you had talked about cutting down the longer videos or you could have them be 10 seconds yep, yep. we got everybody off in different directions looking for different tools and trying new things now. <laughs> Everybody's got that rabbit hole look on their face. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Three hours later. <laughs> you just keep, yeah. keep um, looking into it, subscribe to newsletters. Um, of course, subscribe to ours, but there's lots of AI newsletters out there depending on what you're using AI for. And if you do use Canva, if you do use Hey Jen, if you do use like whatever it is, like check back with them every now and then too, because there's always new things going forward. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at the Canva apps, which I haven't looked at in a minute. Hasn't been that long, but just for video alone, there are 28 apps. And oh, that's wow. where from like avatars to subtitles to voiceovers to animations to a flip book. Um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So there's a ton of things in there. Um, so check it out. I mean, in that sense, yes, explore, but not everything belongs inside mm -hmm. the office, I guess. <laughs> yeah. True. And it also takes time to um, figure out if the outputs you're getting are good enough to you. And I know like with some of the tools we've tried at first, we're like, oh, this 
sucks. Like this is not what we thought it was going to be. And then we figure out actually how to use the tool. And it turns out we were just using it wrong or prompting it wrong or something like that. So when you are playing around with these, um, there, most of these tools do have YouTube videos out there. And I find those to be super helpful. Like if I'm having trouble with one specific little area, you know, in a tool that I can't get it to do exactly what I'm looking for, then I'll Google that. And I'm like, how do I get it to do this? And then, yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite ways to experiment with them. Um, and then there are other ones that are just not going to output what you want, no matter how much you, <laughs> you play around with it. So true story. Well, great. Um, next week will be great because we'll have um, we'll be talking about the case studies for automations. Um, so that should be interesting. Um, and then the following week again, we're we'll have Dawn on talking about the use policies, the AI use policies. So um, you'll get reminders for that, of course, but just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, we're trying to line up as many people as we can in advance so then we can tell you who they are <laughs> before they come. <laughs> awesome. Well, next week I'll be on a plane, but I will watch the recording um, from next Wednesday. It was great to meet with you guys. Great. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.